Hello everyone, and welcome to, welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont show. I'm Bruce Wilson, and today I'm handing solo, no guests, which is, uh, I do this now and then, just kind of go over stuff that we're working on and things that we might accomplish or things that are um, upcoming. So, um, well, Happy New Year to everyone. Hey, 2024, made it to another year so far, so good. How good is that, you know? I how power woke us up this morning. Can't beat that, you know? It's got to be one of the best things ever. But it is the best thing that happened to you in a day. Nothing else is better. Um, so um, I am proud to say that, um, man, I've got, I won more than one, but from town meeting TV, I won a war, another war. It's, it's presented, here it is right here. It's part of it. And it's, it's presented, presents town meeting TV, present the Community Connector Award to Bruce Wilson. Look at that. Community Connector. Now, I've been called some things. I've been called a connector through the years. Well, it's mayors have called me the hub. You know, I'm like, I don't know how I can be the hub when, when they're the mayor, but it's what I say to them. But, um, my goal is um, being a connector or the hub is to help people with the goals, dreams, and aspirations while uh, referring them to our community partners, whether it be jobs, job selling, mentoring, tutoring opportunities, whether it be um, s legislative individuals who need to meet with some community um, directors or business CEOs to make their um, work more um, understandable or uh, complete. So unfortunately, fortunately, I've been able to do that working with these individuals because I work with them. And, um, and I'm just very thankful that I know these individuals and I can do, I can help people with their goals like this um, and help uh, mostly youth and families and uh, college youth uh, interns and to get connected to the, what their goals are in life. And that's real important, you know, if you want to be a software engineer, then we know some software engineers at um, IBM. If you want to be a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, guess what? We know doctors, lawyers, and we, I know two Indian chiefs, so we can connect you right with them. They can tell you what it entails to be a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, and um, maybe you can job shuttling with them. Be, um, so that's how wonderful, that's what we've been doing since um, actually 1999, you know. Um, when I straight talk about my program, we've been helping uh, individuals re-enter the community successfully. We're going over thinking errors and patterns and conflict resolutions and exercises. And, they, um, and because of that, they were been, a lot of them was able to get into like the distance house, Mandela house, um, sanctuary houses, and um, be a, um, you know, helping with the community doing the things that they want to do in the community, doing the things that probably that they want to been, been wanting to do besides getting in trouble. The only way you can change your thinking getting in trouble is you got to change the thinking that got you in trouble. You can't use the same thinking that got you in trouble. You need new information. And so what's the best way to help a person who, um, you can't be around people, places, and things that put you at risk. So what's the best way to help people that, who, to stay out of trouble? It's getting with the things that they want to do. And so that's what we've been doing since 1999. And um, these lot of individuals walk up to me on the streets, and it's incredible to hear people's stories about how they went to some of our programs, Straight Talk Ramon, and my youth advisory boards, and, and all the youth centers I open. I open up six youth centers in across the state for youth to be a part of and, and with a, for a healthy outlet, free to them. And open up art galleries, and uh, we do. We've done over 700 events, community events, and all this is to help them, individuals, including myself, with um, being in a safe place where there's no drugs and alcohol, tobacco, where they can actually have uh, healthy outlets, you know, and come up with creative stuff. Our youth advisory board makes the decisions on our programs, projects, and events. We have we had them, but we were building them right, again across the whole entire state. We created youth on boards for the city of Burlington. We, you know, we, we have our youth advisory boards are powerful, 
You mean they meet with the governor and the senate, whatever, whoever they want to meet with, they meet with them because they're powerful. And like all youth are powerful, they just got to get the opportunity to showcase their talent and be productive and then get people who like me and others to help them. And once you do that, you'd be like me sitting back, laid back, like, what's next? What else we're we supposed to do now? That's why they're in charge of our, our programs, projects, and events in the state. And we have over 50 awards to prove it. And um, we've done over 700 events. I'm very proud of it. I'm tough on it. And, and people who know me, they know that they know that I'm serious. Like some people call me the hub. So there's a lot of people call me the pipe piper for youth. I mean, I don't know where they got that from, but because I don't, youth, our youth promote, we have a peer peer model where they, they teach each other, you know, and they bring their own peers into events and dances and, and educational stuff in our youth centers and our art galleries and everything we've done over through the, through the years since 2003. I'm so, I'm, I'm proud and I stand on that. I don't care what nobody say. Anybody knows me, they know Bruce Wilson. I always bring the youth to an event to have youth agenda items on it. I ain't going to be messing around talking about what you think and how they walk and what they think. They're going to tell you them they, they, they damn self. And that's, that's where they should be. Since so many, so many um, people who, like me, in the capacity that I, like mine, um, just want to do the talking for you, for people who, you know, I'm not going to do the talking for a doctor, lawyer, or an Indian chief. Let them do their own damn talking. They know what the hell they want to say. They, they trained professionals. You know, I can stay on this all day long, you know, because, uh, you know, it kind of pissed me off and it always have for many years. Um, so I'm proud to be called the community connector. I'm proud to say that you're the hub. I'm proud to be called the pi piper for youth. Which, um, you know, don't call me no mentor because I don't use the word mentor with my youth or, or adults or college students or interns. We use the word, or oh, I don't use the word mentee. I, we use the word mentors because they all are mentors. If you cannot learn from a, anybody who you're around, anybody, I don't care if it's a, you see that infant baby, how to see that baby crawl and climb, you're like, damn, I wonder if I can, if I would that baby crawl and climb so well, how cool is that? I wonder, you know, and you learn from that. Now, who's the mentor? Who's the mentee? No, there's none. You're the mentor. They're the mentor. Learn from everybody being a mentor. Don't think and look at I'm, I'm their mentor and they're my mentee. Because first of all, we never call nobody a mentee in our programs. First of all, when you say that, you, oh, I'm your mentor and you're my mentee, they go, the ment so-called mentees think that you're smarter than them, that they're supposed to learn something from you. And that um, it's the first thing about mentoring um, partnerships is that you've got to find a youth or, or individual who have similar uh, some something like about each other you know and so first time if you can't be something about each other how you know that person is gonna not gonna be honest with you that person is not gonna be straight with you that person gonna feel that you're better than them that you know they can't teach you nothing hey I learned all the time from you shit <laughs> without them what would I do I don't know what to do. I don't know, how, you know, they so smart when I, um, I events and coordinate events and, and uh, I, uh, IT stuff and, oh God, social media. I don't know nothing about uh, none of those things. Is, is that like them? I won't even try to. I won't even challenge myself to go put up, make up new posters and put our stuff on Facebook and all our social medias that we have. I won't even try. I, I'm surprised myself when I look at our website, artsowonderful.com. I'm like, wow, look at that. Look at that. How did I get there? How did I get a picture there with the governor? How did I get there with the, with, with the mayor? You know, that, I mean, I look, it's so exciting just to see my own website that I don't know, even, I don't even, even look at it. You know, you know why I don't look at it? Because I don't need to look at it. You know why I don't need to, you know why? We actually don't even need no, no website. People know about us. They know we got we have all, we, we're the leaders in murals. We're the leaders in in um, youth centers and um, art art stuff. They know we're not necessarily the leaders, but we are in the lead since 2003, and we've been doing this since 1999. So I'm gonna stand firm on that. You know, I'm gonna stand firm with that. You know. Um, so anyway, so this is why it's called the, the uh, Straight Talk with my Bruce Wilson show. Because basically, this is the time I can say what I want to. 
anything I want to, I can say, right? I am very fortunate to be a part of the, um, the governor's honor me. I'm a human rights commissioner for the state of Vermont. You know, when our lawyer said, to, when our lawyer, my lawyer said to me, to our team, said, Bruce, I asked him, how many people I, I represent as a commissioner of the state of Vermont? Said, you represent 667,000 people. I'm like, whoa, that's a lot. I'm proud to, you know. You might need my help about anything about um, he, Human Rights Commission. I'll um, refer you to our incredible Big Harmon, our uh, executive director and, and our legal, top legal senior uh, lawyer. She can send it out to our team and help you out. You know, if you have any questions or some you might think things that I might be able to help you with, you know, I can help you. I'll try to do my best. And so I'm happy to be a part about that. I'm happy to be on Vermont Mental Health that I also was appointed by the governor to be a part of. Because if you say you don't have mental health issues, <laughs> something wrong with you. I know I got mental health. Thank God for these mental health issues. I, you know, I ain't better than no damn body. I ain't trying to be. All I want is to continue to um, get better. And the only way I'm going to do that is from people like, like all of you. It's the only way. It's the only way I'm going to get better. I got mental health issues. Yes, I do. For those of you who just say you have no mental health issues and there's nothing wrong with you and you're too good for, to learn from you, here's some advice from Bruce Wilson. I didn't, get, I didn't learn this from nobody. But I think that if you dig a hole like six feet down and jump in it and throw, the, and, and throw six feet of dirt on yourself, and then now that's perf being perfect. Let's see if you can do that. You know, that's, that's being perfect. I don't advise somebody to do that. I'm not telling nobody to do that because you can't do it no way. You can dig the hole, but you can't throw six feet. You can't throw the dirt back on yourself. Anyways, here I am talking, talking like Bruce Wilson from the South Side of Chicago. That's me. So, anyways, March. Let's go over some things. What time is it? So I'm still good. March. So we got some stuff that I'm working and helping with. In March. Wow, the stink. The stink, man. It's January. Wow, no, no, yes, yes it is. It's January, man. How fast that, it, January 11th, that's mid-month. Whoa, that's something. Coming up, January 15th, everybody, MLK Day. It's a day on, not a day off. So, you know, if you go clean your, um, don't listen. You know, you can spend all your day working, but, you know, most people do like a couple hours a day and you know, do some community service opportunities, go work with some uh, organizations, some nonprofits who might need your help and doing some things, you know. Um, who knows how to be on January 15th. It could be snow everywhere. So you might want to shovel out somebody's driveway or whatever, you know, or <laughs> shovel out your own damn driveway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we all get so lazy, and that, and that's including me, you know. I'm not going to go, God, I got to do something. But somebody always want me to do something on MLK Day, and I'm very proud to do it because I really can't think of all the things to do on MLK Day, you know, because I think I, 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 I feel I do a lot for in volunteerism. Um, like I said, we have over 50 awards, and we've done over 700 events, and, and I can't think of a lot of things else to do. Uh, as far as volunteering, but I'll do it if I can, you know. I'm not getting no, I'm not getting no younger, that's for sure. But I'll try. I'm not, I'm, I'll try. I'll help. So um, anybody want to know how to reach me, just Google my name and, you, and just say, I need your help, Bruce. Um, so MLK, man. Wow, March the King Day, man. Figure that. It's a big deal, you know. Man. We've, I, I, I think we've come... You know, I don't, you know, if you're at my age, born and raised in the civil rights movement, you would say that um, we've come some, we've come afar, but we didn't come, we haven't come a long ways. We really haven't. You know, it's like things, it just words change. It's just words change, situations change, demographics change. These things change, you know. But when it comes down to like civil rights, racism, being stereotyped, you know, um, these things really don't change, you know. You might get a smile on your face this time, but not usually people and from their heart, born and raised in um, racism, born and raised with um, stereotypical w ways, and 
angry about some race or somebody, usually they stick with them. I don't care what the hell, Black Lives Matter or what the hell it is. They usually change states with them. I'm here to tell you, I, I sit on, <laughs> man, so many anti-racism programs in the state of Vermont, um, from the Human Rights Commission to um, um, when this is school district anti-racism, Green Mountain Transit, Justice and Diversity and Inclusion. Um, geez, my God, I can't even think of all the things, all the anti-racism programs that I, I sit on for years and years and years. And then all the room be filled, everybody talk about it, and then all of a sudden the room get empty. And where are the people who was like, you know, Black Lives Matter, we're anti-racism, uh, let's, you know, let's be proud of each other. Let's look out for each other in the ways that we can, you know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's do these things. And all of a sudden they disappear. Now I've seen this. I've been in Vermont since 1989. I've seen this happen more than once. And so the words are turned different. You know, so let's, let's bring out um, um, people of color, people who look like me, you know, BIPOC, you know, um, um, let's bring them, let's bring them in the front room. Let's stop the back room stuff, you know. Let's not make deals in the back room, you know, when you thought that you had a chance and all of a sudden when you come out and anybody's smiling, you think you got a chance because your resume is incredible and you, you're an incredible person and the job is, you feel you can do it and you can learn from others within the organization that you can want to work for and they have already made the decision who's going to be so it's, it's not really no it's it, the back rooms are still they're still there you know the back room is still there you know it's it's pitiful it's pitiful um uh, sorry my phone is going off it's one of my um community partners and i'm we'll call him right back in a second but i'm saying so I'm so I'm just got a little some issues around, you know. I sit on, um, you know, I've got issues around um, a lot of things, you know, um, about uh, obviously if I didn't love everybody, which my parents taught me, I wouldn't be in Vermont since 1989, the whitest state in America. Well, somebody says it's the second whitest state. White, top five, type ten, top ten, whatever. It's still the whitest state, which is okay. White people are all right. You know, obviously, I'm, I don't have no problem with them. But this is '89, and if I if I had a problem with white people, I wouldn't be in Vermont this long. But I do know what racism is. I know how be be with stereotyping, being stereotyped is. You know, many times I mean, I'll be sitting in, many times I'm sitting in one of our youth centers or art galleries, and I'm just at the front desk hanging out because. Usually I'm in the back, you don't even see me, you don't even know I, I'm the principal of all these places. And they're like, wow, well, how did you know, last, last one I was at the art gallery and somebody like, how'd you get this to, uh, to die for a job? You know, because I mean? I'm sitting at the front greeting people, and that's, which, that's part of, I guess, the connector, the hub, the, you know, pipe popper in me, you know, that's what I, I think I'm really good at that. And, um, wow, they said, how'd you do it? I said, well, Usually I don't sit right here at the front. I sit way in the back, out of the way, you know, let our youth or coordinators run this place or run our stuff because it ain't about me. My job is to help them with their, whatever they need. And I said, but it was, in I'm so, you know, um, so um, how this place came to be was that we wanted to evolve from youth centers, let's say our gallery, to our gallery. And so, so I said, okay. So I opened up the art gallery. And uh, so when, I, when they say, see that, wow, I'm the guy who opened up this place, they look at me like, what, you, you? you? I get that look like, I got to be lying. Not, not to wear your white socks cap, bulls cap, bears cap guy to the left. Oh, yeah, bam, yeah, that's me. Stop sorry, let's go go. That's me, that's me. But you know, so they, they, it's kind of hard for them to understand sometimes that a um, person who look like me can, can care about people who like them. 
you know, everybody, like the, the government said, you, or our lawyer said, our lawyer said, you represent 667,000 people. It's, it's, it's hard for individuals to, to sometimes see a um, person of color, me, black man, who cares about everybody and actually go out this way to do things, you know, to actually do these things. So, but I don't, it don't bother me at all because I expect it, you know. Yep, I expect. So anyway, let's go over some of these events. Yeah. And anytime somebody want to get in touch with me, Bruce Wilson 817 at gmail.com. It's B-R-U-C-E W-I-L-S-O-N 817 at gmail.com. Send me an email. I'll get right with you. Go have some coffee or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm here straight, straight up for me. You know, I think that's why the governor and all the mayors and all these senators and Congress people like me because I'm straight up. Ain't no shake on what I'm talking about. I mean it. I mean it. You know, I'm not going to be like <laughs> acting like somebody else or some token black person. You won't find that in me at all. You know, and I sit on them for my state police, fair and partial police. I work with the chiefs around the, around the um, state. I, you know, I, all the things, I work with law enforcement and all kind of things, you know, I do. You know, I work with them. Not, I don't work with them, but I work with them. Anyways, so anyways, uh, here we go. March. Yay. Damn, man. It was January, February, March. Woo, thank God I got two months. Uh, Vermont Housing Finance Agency. I'm helping them put on um event in Winooski. It's called the First Time Buyers Information. They're going to talk to individuals about the first time home buyers, right? So if your parents never had a home, or then you might be eligible. You are, That starts you off as being eligible because you'd be the first time um, home buyers. And so basically, we're going to sign people up on March 8th when they come to O'Brien Center to, to and um, um, Vermont um, Housing Finance Agency will talk to you about um, what it entails to be a first time home buyer, how they can help you maybe with some grants, with our community partners and mortgage people who still don't have mortgage, mortgage lenders, and like credit unions. Um, these type of people, banks, and they will be there at this event. And they will be there very happy because you know they're going to be very happy. They definitely want to sign you up. Um, and so I'm very happy too. Like when, when we first had our meeting, I'm like, God, we got to do Winooski first, you know, because Winooski is very unique. And uh, people, new Americans, a lot of new Americans are there. And, you know, they pay a lot of money to stay in a place they, they stay in already. Why not buy, have a place? You know what I'm saying? Why not? Maybe get a duplex and rent it to somebody else. And next you know, they'd be like, 50 events, I mean 50 um, units somewhere. But anyways, so that's March 8th. I'm gonna have the whole entire O'Brien Center. And that's how we do events though, over 700. Listen, so we're gonna have the community room where the food and presentations will be. When you walk in, people are gonna be, through our team, our volunteering team, was gonna be signing people up, you know, for the first time home buyers, whereas that um, Vermont Housing Finance AC will come and contact you and, and interview you and see are you ready? Not right there, but somewhere once they get it, all the lists compiled. And then, um, but meanwhile, um, they, uh, Vermont Housing Finance Agency will talk, will be speaking for about an hour about what it entails to, to be a first time home buyer. And um, our, uh, we're gonna have um, like our credit unions and banks and mortgages and realtors and all that there. And so we're gonna have a swag bag for you know, like from to give you that uh, these individuals, these organizations, you can just throw thing, drop things in there, or you can sign up with them about you want to meet with them about um, you might you want to meet with them, um, and also um, on the lead on this um, first time buyer is a partnership between Vermont Housing and Vermont Human Rights Commissioner. And I'm a Vermont, I'm a, I'm a commissioner for the state of Vermont on the Human Rights Commission. So they want to talk to you about, you know, um, they, will, they want, you might want to sign up with them too to talk about um, some issues you might have um, in your, you know, in your life. And so, um, and then we'll have other providers like, um, we're, I'm, we're not there yet, but we already know we have one that's why from like, you know, CJC's, from um, CVOO, people like that who, who would um, um, so you would know about um, 
you can learn about other ways you can uh, get information about uh, first-time home buyer and effects from having a home. All right, so that's going to be, you know, I, got, I got March 8th. I think that's what I said I'm going to do that. Then you got April, April, um, CBO, yo, um, Fair Housing Project. Yay, they do it every year. And it's like an arts and craft contact contest. And they have information about um, fair housing, you know, and what it is and what it tells, the measurements, the demographics, the uh, outcome. Um, uh, you, le you learn about it, you know. Uh, and so it's going to be at um, City Hall. Well, so we're going to have, uh, so Art So Wonderful is going to have fun with that. And we're going to have, a, like, normally a contest of art, and then we'll pick art, art who, who won the art, and then win prizes. And meanwhile, we'll have information about the count on what is fair housing, what's the minimum housing we have, how many more houses do we need, think, you know, things, whatever you think of what fair housing project is. It'll be through um, CVOEO, which is in Art So Wonderful. And, um, Vermont um, uh, Human Rights Commission, which is, was nice. And another thing, so right now, right now, um, Art So Wonderful, Bruce T. Wilson, we got a new new uh, business, it's called, uh, it was called Bruce T. Wilson, INC. And, um, and we are calling Artists and muralists, to, you know, we art so art so wonderful is one of our programs, and we have over sixty percent of the murals in Burlington, and around we have them everywhere, it's like in Saint Paul, you know, everywhere. We in two thousand ten, we 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 founded, we created art so wonderful lecture boxes. So you see a lot of lecture boxes, da da da, between us and our sponsors, we got we we, the, we have a lot. A lot of them. we own those we own those boxes. But anyways, um, so what we're gonna be doing with the Burlington Business Association starting, I, I I'm helping working with them on April fifth. I, I said April fifth. Um, it was called Sunset Cleanup, which we're gonna have um, graffiti removal and you know like we're gonna have these little world best graffiti removal, little thing towels, and we just walk around and get little spots off the wall. You take a picture, you know, hopefully you win a prize or something through us. But we're going to coordinate that, and hopefully I can get a, a Burlington High School students, because Burlington High School students need 40 hours of community service to graduate. You can do all 40 hours in one week if you wanted to. Usually they go 10 per year, but they need 40 to graduate, so we're going to look for them. We're going to use for our Burlington Business Association members, we're going to look for um, Chamber of Commerce members, because you know what, if you get graffiti on your property, guess what, you're going to want somebody to come help you get it off, just like you should come help us get stuff off, and we're gonna, I'm going to be dead on that, I created the Burlington, uh, I, I created a graffiti removal program to, mm, uh, 2001 for the Burlington, City of Burlington Community Justice Center, and, it's, and uh, not, we, we still continue to do it, so wonderful. So, calling artists and muralists to contact arts so wonderful at gmail.com. So it's A R T S arts so wonderful at gmail.com. So you want to be part of um, you want your artist and you want to do some murals because we're gonna do some of those. Some of this, um, we, we, I'm calling it the sunset cleanup that uh, our, um, our executive director, Kelly Devine, sent me some information about what they, some work people do around the country, around how the businesses and polit politics and schools and everybody get together and they um, actually um, take time out to keep their downtown and city clean. How, how important is that? You know, take one hour. You imagine you got 50 people one hour wiping up some graffiti off the wall with those little, with this little graffiti wipe it off. Well, you got 50 people doing that like once a once a week or well, once a month. I haven't decided if it's gonna be once a week or once a month, but definitely it's gonna be April 5th. Um, it's called Sunset Cleanup, probably like from five to six or six to seven or something. 
You know, we're going to have some cool stuff happening that day, too. You know, we'll give us some refreshment, cocoa, or we're going to help, whatever we decide. Um, I'm going to talk to Kelly and Colin about well, how are we going to treat the people that um, uh, help out, you know. Uh, we know for a fact if Bronx High School kids get, they get 10 hours, they get hours served. How wonderful is that? Just walk around your school and wipe up graffiti off your school with little wipes. <laughs> you spend an hour doing that, you know what I mean? You do that. Man, you can get 10 hours easily doing that but per year. So that's um, March, Vermont Housing Finance Agency, first time buyers. That's March 5th. April, it's going to be at the O'Brien Center. I'm telling you, it's going to be tight. We're going to well, listen. I ain't messing around. Listen, I got the, the dining room. I got the, you know, the big room, the community room. I got the kitchen. I got the foyer when you first walk in. I got uh, uh, the, the basketball court where we have like live entertainment. We're gonna have like, uh, <laughs> see, you gonna have uh, what is it? Um, yeah, live entertainment there. Uh, I think it's gonna be um, what is the name of this group? From Africa to Vermont, yeah, yeah, uh, ATVT. They gonna be nice. They gonna say, they gonna say, I'm from Vermont. I mean, I live in Winooski. They gonna sing the Winooski song. We're gonna, <laughs> so that's gonna be nice. So we're gonna have that. It's gonna be in the um, gym. We have bounce houses and castles for the little kids. Free food and refreshments. It's gonna be a big deal for the um, individuals who live in Winooski. So here I am tuning out right now. Bruce Wilson. And I'm happy to be able to serve this, um, be able to do this show by myself. You know, you know, I stand by what I say. I might have made some mistakes on some of the dates with their words that I might have used, but I'm really going, I really mean what I said, everything I said. And so just know, just know, I got the Town Meeting TV Award for being the Community Connectors Award, you know, that goes to Bruce Wilson. You know, we've been doing shows since, good Lord, uh, 2003. Look at that, man. Woo woo. So there you go. So, so I've been called the connector, the hub, and the, um, what I say, the, the pipe piper for youth. So thank you for joining in the Straight Talk Vermont show. I'm Bruce Wilson. See you soon.